the Mauna Loa record was a wake up call for people that humans were impacting the whole world in a way that would affect climate. And so it was kind of the alarm bell that went off. Dr. Keeling says this isn't the end of their record, but it is a gap they hope won't last too long. One of the most widespread theories about the universe's beginning is the Big Bang Theory, which postulates that the universe was formed from a giant explosion. Some also follow the theory and believe that the world would end via an asteroid impact as believed in many mass extinctions. It would not be wrong to think so, but this might not be true. And what's more, recent researchers believe that the actions of volcanoes would be the end of the Earth, or at the very least a change in form. Why do we believe that volcanic activity can end civilization? What evidence supports the connection between volcanic activity and catastrophic consequences? Are there volcanoes of a scale capable of causing widespread devastation and potentially ending civilization as we know it? Keep watching to find out. The Mauna Loa volcano is one of Earth's largest and most active. It's located on the south central part of the island of Hawaii, Hawaii State, US, and a part of Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. Mauna Loa, Hawaiian for Long Mountain is one of the world's largest single mountain masses, rising to 13,677 feet above sea level and constitutes half of the island's area. Mauna Loa is a shield volcano that's erupted some three dozen times since its first well-documented eruption in 1843. Many of its eruptions are confined within Mokoweoweo caldera. Others are lower flank eruptions along northeast or southwest fissure zones. During eruptions in 1935 and 1942, U.S. military planes dropped bombs in attempts, partially successful, to divert the path of lava flows that threatened the city of Hilo, with its last eruption occurring in 1984. Geologists are constantly monitoring the volcano for signs of activity to enable them to predict and prepare preventive and cautionary measures in case of a potential eruption. And they're scared about the likely outcome of their tests, as the eruptions can have considerable effects on neighborhoods and infrastructure close to it. Lately, it's been a severe concern for everyone, especially the residents around it, as the volcano has begun showing signs of a catastrophe. This started when the volcano began to stir, showing increased activities in the form of small earthquakes and slight swelling of certain land surfaces. On November 27th, fountains of lava began pouring from the mountain's northeast rift zone, and streams of molten rock flowed to the north side. The eruption sent lava flows toward a significant highway, causing concerns for residents as it's the primary route connecting Hilo and Kailua Kona. Hilo and Kona are towns known for their natural beauty, outdoor activities, and stunning waterfalls and the highway connecting them known as the Hawaii Belt Road, or Route 19, runs east to west across the Big Island. If the flows reach the highway, it'll lead to a road blockage which could create problems for many residents in the two towns. Transportation problems will ensue for those who commute from Hilo and other parts of the highlands where housing is cheaper, and there are better living conditions, to jobs on the west side which houses the larger beach resorts. One of the job opportunities available in Hilo is the Hilo Medical Center. As the largest hospital on the island and a leading healthcare provider for the community, they cater to a host of people from both towns, Hilo and Kona, and employ over 1,200 employees, including doctors, nurses, and support staff. Some of these people are from the west side and commute via the highway. Mike Brown, a Kona resident, spoke to NBC News about the blockage, saying that the roadways on the island are limited. Anytime a roadway is lost for any reason, the attention and traffic shift to somewhere else, and unless an alternative route is created, commuters would need to take the coastal route to and from the Kailua Kona, adding an extra driving hour each way. A Hilo resident, Sky Mackay, working in Kona, also told the press that the highway blockage would make commuting to his workplace harder. 
He stated that only a few people must travel for four hours on each trip, totaling eight hours daily. The Hawaii governor, David Ige, rose to the situation quickly, issuing an emergency directive allowing responders to arrive quickly or limit access to the area as needed, so that if the lava crosses the highway, the Hawaii National Guard can quickly plan for alternative means and set up a bypass route. As sympathetic as people can be, it's not possible to imagine the effect this has on individuals and even families. A Hilo resident, Haley Haina Barcia, who has family living on the island, says her family relies on the highway to see one another, and the blockage adds several hours longer to the travel time to go to the south way or take the north road. Although the lava flows in Hawaii move at a pace slow enough that they can be avoided, their destructive nature cancels out that advantage, according to the United States government. They can destroy everything in their paths, including vegetation and infrastructure, which can cut off road access and utilities. Not only that, the lava flows can cause severe burns, scrapes, and cuts upon contact with unprotected, exposed, or lightly covered skin. They also affect air quality by raising environmental temperatures and significantly reducing visibility after heavy rain. Let's delve into a brief history of destruction caused by volcanic activities. For Mauna Loa, in about 50% of its previous eruptions, the lava remained in the summit region, which rises about 55,700 feet above its base. In the cases of the other 50%, the lava spilled into one of the rift zones, producing flows that covered regions of the volcano's lowest slopes. According to the National Park Service NPS, in 1984, a rapid river of lava reached within two miles of Kulani Prison, which proved to be one of the most significant hazards of the volcano. Eyewitness accounts of Mauna Loa's active period during the mid to late 1800s describe some of the damage wreaked by Mauna Loa's lava flows. Initial accounts of Mauna Loa's 1868 eruption described an immense stream of lava erupting from a crater and moving toward the ocean at a speed of 20 miles per hour, destroying everything it touched, including horses, cattle, and land, leaving the villagers to run for their lives. Less than a hundred years later, on the night of June 1, 1950, another major eruption occurred. A 23-day flow from a 13-mile fissure in the southwest rift destroyed a small village. Lava flows from the volcano entered Hoakena Mocha village in South Kona, blocking Highway 11, the town's only escape route, and consuming several houses including a post office before traveling to sea. Fortunately, the lava flows from that eruption recorded no casualties. Before the 2022 lava flows, Mount Loa's most recent eruption occurred in 1984, but the lava flows caused no significant damage, one of the few recorded damages being the lava covering and burying about 60 miles of state-owned land. Mount Loa has caused earthquake damage. As molten rock enters the volcano, it expands and becomes unstable, causing earthquakes, some of which are more significant than others. These earthquakes in turn trigger landslides and tsunamis, like the eruption in 1868. On April 2, 1868, an eruption at Mauna Loa triggered a massive magnitude 8 earthquake, causing a fatal landslide and an enormous tidal wave that claimed many lives and destroyed properties. An analysis of the 1868 eruption slash earthquake described it as an avalanche, instantly claiming and destroying 31 lives, 10 houses, and 500 heads of cattle. It would seem like that was not brutal enough. The sea rose 20 feet along the island shore, destroying 108 houses, and another 46 people drowned, bringing the loss up to 118 houses and 77 lives in the district in just an hour. What's more, volcanic smog, also known as VOG, related to Mauna Loa's volcanic activity has impacted human health negatively. It's produced when gases like sulfur dioxide and other gases emitted by active volcanoes combine with elements in the atmosphere, such as moisture and oxygen, 
and can destroy crops and contaminate drinking water. Active volcanoes like Mauna Loa create volcanic smog, and they can cause respiratory problems for people living downwind of the volcano, causing irritation to the eyes, nose, and throat, as well as headaches and fatigue killing crops and reducing air and road traffic visibility. The ejection of sulfur and nitrogen oxides into the atmosphere can also lead to acid rain, negatively affecting the environment, damaging forests, lakes, and rivers, and harming wildlife and aquatic creatures. It damages buildings, cars, and other infrastructure, and can severely impact human health. Mauna Loa is an active volcano and has indirectly caused volcanic air pollution since its last major eruption. Recently, Mauna Loa began inflating, and soon after, its sister volcano, which it shares an intricate volcanic relationship with, began erupting and creating vog. However, Mauna Loa is not the first volcano that would erupt so powerfully, enough to split the Earth apart. The largest sustained volcanic eruption in Earth's history was so powerful it split an ancient supercontinent and created the Atlantic Ocean. It emitted millions of square miles of hot, searing lava that destroyed much of life on ancient Earth. According to research recently made public, scientists combined evidence of the enormous eruption from 200 million years ago. This they got from investigating the hundreds of outcrops bordering the Atlantic coasts. After the initial flow, the eruption set the fractured land drifting and tore them apart, gradually opening the basin that created the Atlantic Ocean and creating a new map of the world to the form it has now. Given a few million years, half of all marine species died, as did almost as many reptiles and other land animals, setting the stage for the dinosaur age and the first mammalian evolution. The new research proposed a theory that mass extinctions which had occurred on Earth repeatedly since the beginning of the universe were not only caused by collisions with comets or stray asteroids, but by the fierce internal volcanoes on the planet itself. So far, three mass extinctions have been linked with such massive eruptions. Pauli Olsen, a paleontologist in the Le Monde Doherty Earth Observatory of Columbia University, expressed his belief in the new research, saying it's a major advance since it's one of the biggest events that's ever happened in Earth's history. And even though it was a giant igneous event, it all seems to have occurred in an incredibly short time. Olsen said some scientists were out analyzing basil, dikes, sills, and lavas at the New Jersey Palisades in the Brazilian Amazon to Spain and West Africa to reenact the ancient catastrophe. Leading the team was Paul Renning, a dating expert, the center director of Berkeley Geochronology, and his colleague Andrea Marzoli by studying the chemical composition and precisely dating the residual radioisotopes in the rocks the researchers determined that the formations all originated from the same eruption. Once they discovered that the outcrops were linked, they could determine that once before in history, the rocks had all been located together at the center of an immense continent called Pangaea, one stretching unbroken from pole to pole. The newly identified eruption, the Central Atlantic Magmatic Province, appears centered in Florida. It's one of the most extensive flows, with about 2.7 million square miles of basaltic lava. The formations found recently during the research are so severely eroded or deeply buried in the Earth that the researchers suspect they only see a fraction of the remains, suggesting that the eruption was likely more incredible than they could tell or imagined it to be. That the massive eruption was just a single event is one of the most underappreciated things. According to René, the fact that it coincides with one of the most significant extinction events we know about is pretty exciting. There are few things as sure in the geologic record of Earth that are as tremendous and so far unexplained cataclysms that with disturbing regularity bring life on the planet to the brink of extinction. However, only a few things are as contentious in the science of Earth as the effort to find out the mechanisms responsible for these catastrophes. While searching for a culprit, 
Researchers have pointed fingers at almost everything that an educated imagination can conceive, ranging from ice age cooling, greenhouse warming, drops in sea level, and a steep decline in the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere to recurring impacts with comets. The Earth has witnessed devastating extinction events throughout its history, with one of the most catastrophic occurring at the boundary between the Permian and Triassic periods 250 million years ago. The event, known as the Great Dying, resulted in the eradication of approximately 80% of all ocean species and 70% of all land vertebrate families, which nearly obliterated organic life from the planet. The exact cause of this mass extinction remains a mystery. Another well-known extinction event took place about 65 million years ago, marking the end of the dinosaur era and paving the way for the rise of other mammals, including humans. Recent research has shown that a colossal asteroid impact near the Yucatan Peninsula played a significant role in this event. Scientists like René and his colleagues have proposed that extensive lava flows called flood basalts may have played a crucial role in several major extinctions throughout history. These researchers have identified evidence of two other catastrophic lava pores in India and Siberia, which matched the extinction events 250 million and 65 million years ago. They also discovered the Camp eruption, which was even more extensive. During each eruption, large amounts of magma were emitted from multiple volcano cones, and they all took their source from the enormous subterranean reservoir of molten rock. As the lava flow engulfed the landscape, enormous clouds of toxic fumes and greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide were released into the atmosphere. While the lava could have caused wildfires, the gases likely had additional effects, leading to ecological disruptions and significant climate changes. However, some experts argue that although those extensive lava flows may have been devastating, they might not have been the sole cause of the global disturbances observed. Still, one of the most intriguing issues in geology during these mass extinctions, geological evidence suggests that other cosmic objects may have collided with Earth, contributing to these periodic extinctions. It is a unique coincidence that the three most significant mass extinctions in the last 500 million years coincide with three most significant volcanic eruptions, so it's hard to call an accident. Recent research has unveiled evidence of a volcanic eruption that occurred 200 million years ago, with an eruption so powerful that it caused the separation of continents and led to the extinction of numerous life forms on Earth. This brings us to an important question. Can more volcanoes reform the map? or change the ecosystem and structure of the environment. Yellowstone National Park is home to a massive volcano, a massive magma reservoir responsible for the geysers and hot basins in the park. It can erupt with catastrophic consequences, posing a significant threat to humanity. Known as the Yellowstone Caldera, this volcano is one of the largest active volcanoes in the world, with a diameter of over 40 miles. While it's not erupted in over 640,000 years, it is still considered active, and scientists continue to study its behavior to better understand the risks it poses. Yellowstone is in three U.S. states, with the majority of it in Wyoming, but a small section of the park is in Montana, and a small section of the park, about 1% to the west, is in Idaho. Approximately once every 100,000 years, a supervolcano eruption occurs globally, with potentially fatal consequences. Suppose an eruption occurs beneath Yellowstone National Park now. In that case, it will result in food scarcity, affecting strategic and essential countries all over the world. And a volcanic winter would result from the release of large amounts of sulfur dioxide and other materials into the atmosphere after a volcanic eruption. This material can block the sun's rays from reaching the Earth's surface, causing global temperatures to decrease, resulting in a colder and darker environment. The impact of a volcanic winter can be devastating, causing widespread crop failures, famine, and disease outbreaks. 
According to the UN, a Yellowstone eruption could leave us with a food supply of over 74 days. If the supervolcano and Yellowstone were to experience another massive eruption, the ash from the eruption would travel across thousands of miles in the United States. However, at the moment, the possible scenario at Yellowstone would be a minor event characterized by lava flow similar to what's currently happening in Iceland by the Bunga volcano, also known as Mount Merapi. The volcanic activity caused ash and hot clouds to rise into the sky, a typical volcanic explosion. Before this happens, a cautionary string of earthquakes in a distinctive park region would have occurred alerting researchers as the magma rises towards the surface. However, if a much larger eruption occurs, no matter how unlikely, the warning signs would be more significant. Intense seismic activity would likely be observed across the entire park. Lowenstein explained that underground earthquakes could take weeks or months to break through the rocks arranged and set on the upper surface before an eruption. Now, if a super eruption a catastrophic event 1,000 times more potent than a regular volcanic eruption, ejecting at least 240 cubic miles of material, lasting for weeks or months were to happen. The lava flows would be contained within a relatively small radius in the park, approximately 40 miles. In fact, only about one-third of the material would reach the atmosphere. The primary damage would result from volcanic ash, a mixture of rock fragments, volcanic glass, and crystallized minerals, propelled miles into the air and dispersed across the atmosphere. In their recent study, Lowenstein and his colleagues examined historical ash deposits. They employed advanced modeling methods to conclude that an eruption would create an expanding umbrella cloud in all directions. A super-eruption could bury the northern Rockies under up to three feet of ash, wrecking large areas of Wyoming, Idaho, Colorado, Montana, and Utah. The Midwest would experience a few inches of ash, with even smaller amounts reaching the two coasts. The exact ash distribution would depend on the time of year and weather patterns. The substantial amount of volcanic ash can result in casualties among humans, plants, and animals. It can also lead to a collapse in infrastructure, as a few inches of ash could affect a significant portion of the country. It can devastate farms, block roads, cause intense respiratory problems, clog sewer lines, and spoil electrical lines. The effects would not only be limited to landed activities. Air travel would also be suspended across a considerable portion of North America. Furthermore, an eruption of such magnitude would seriously affect the global climate. The sulfur aerosols released into the atmosphere have a short lifespan, but their impact is always immensely felt. Although the possibility of a supervolcano eruption at Yellowstone remains relatively low, it would be reckless not to acknowledge the likely dangers and threats associated with such an event. And by continuing to study these volcanic phenomena, scientists and researchers aim to enhance our preparedness and protect the planet's health and that of its inhabitants. Continuous research, collaborative, and proactive measures are ways through which we seek to control the potential impacts of natural disasters and ensure the stability of the global community. The Mount Tambora eruption in 1815 also had severe side effects, going down in history as the most catastrophic eruption. 92,000 died directly or indirectly due to the event. Its gas emission also caused enough cooling to damage crops worldwide, leading to famine in certain regions. The eruption of Mount Pinatubo, an active volcano in the Philippines in 1991, significantly impacted the planet. The eruption caused a temperature drop of almost 0.5 degrees Celsius and impacted weather patterns for several years. In addition, it caused a 10 to 20 percent decrease in the ozone layer, leading to increased UV radiation exposure. Presently, researchers claim there are no indications of a forthcoming eruption at Yellowstone National Park. Although the region experiences earthquakes and ground movements, they're quite the norm. According to the United States Geological Survey, USGS, 
Yellowstone's behaving as it has been for the past 140 years, and the likelihood of an eruption in the coming years is very low. They further explained that based on the history of the previous three eruptions, the odds of an eruption occurring at Yellowstone is about 0.00014%. Note that the probability of an asteroid colliding with Earth and ending life as we know it is higher. Uncertainty in the notion now is that volcanologists still need to determine whether Yellowstone erupts on a regular cycle or has stayed dormant long enough to be tagged overdue for another significant eruption. The outcomes of this open up a probability that a significant eruption may never happen. With the uncertainty and doubt around a potential super-eruption of the volcano, what measures can then be taken for prevention? Volcanoes can cease their activity when the pressure from the magma chamber decreases and the magma can no longer reach the surface. As the magma cools and solidifies, it clogs the volcanic duct, stopping the eruption. Some eruptions can also fizzle over time, when the supply of magma to the surface decreases, or as the current case of Yellowstone is, a shift in the volcanic hotspot beneath it. Also in play is the idea of cooling the volcano with water. As the temperature inside the volcano increases, more gases are produced and the area above the magma chamber expands. If the heat surpasses a certain threshold, the most viable solution would be to cool the volcano. The only downside to this idea is the controversy that would trail it. Water is a vital commodity, and some people would be uncomfortable using such amounts of a valuable commodity just to cool down a volcano. Even though the probability of a super-eruption occurring is uncertain, researchers and volcanologists continue their research and exploration. Through such explorations, innovative ideas like utilizing water to cool the volcano are gotten, further demonstrating the commitment to finding lasting solutions to address the potential threats. To ensure the safety and well-being of ourselves and the planet, we should be prepared to make bold moves. In a bold and daring move, NASA has developed a counterplan that involves drilling 10 kilometers deep into the side of the volcano and pumping water under high pressure. With this technique, the operation remains safe and the problem is well addressed. However, reasonable solutions are costly, as the plan is estimated to cost a whopping $3.46 billion. This is a considerable amount of money, won't you say? Although, as costly as it might seem, we should consider the benefits of the process. Apart from preventing a catastrophe, the establishment of a geothermal plant harnesses the excess heat emitted while pumping the water from the volcano's depths. The plant can generate electricity at an incredibly competitive price of around 10 cents per kilowatt hour. In conjunction with other researchers, NASA is not resting on its oars, but is continuously thinking of innovative ways to find solutions for global issues. These alternative methods they provided act as a base or tentative solution that can be used in an emergency. As researchers keep working hard to find better and more acceptable solutions, can the ones available save our planet from destruction? Are they feasible enough? Let us know what you think in the comments. Remember to like the video and subscribe for more updates.